this morning, we just <clears throat> going to read it from the Message Bible, and I'm going to uh, talk about a love uh, uh, never dies. Love never dies, and uh, love is in action. Love is in action. So we're going to cover those two things this morning. Love never dies, and uh, that love that never dies, there's action that you must do to prove that, hey, you have love in you. Okay, so let's put together one, two, three. If I speak with you, man, and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, what happened? But the rusty gate. And here together, let's go. If I speak with power, mm -hmm, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, uh -huh, and it jumps, but I don't have love, what happened? I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. Uh -huh. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, what happened? I am bankrupt without. Let's say that one more time. Say that one more time. No matter, no matter, no matter. From the, from, yep, yeah, one, two, three. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, what happened, I am bankrupt without love. Love never, love cares more for others than, love doesn't want, uh-huh, come on. Yep. Yeah. Yep, me first, doesn't fly off the end, uh -huh. doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't reveal wherever when others takes pleasure in the of truth, puts up with, trust God, always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never, love never, love never, come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are teaching us to grow in your love. We thank you for what you are going to do in our life this morning. Those couple minutes we're going to spend in your word, we pray that you speak to us all. Help us to grow in your love. Give us the anointing to teach them and give them the anointing to receive and go home and apply those words in their lives. We honor you. We thank you. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. So again, we are talking about loving each other loving your neighbor is very important. The Bible say, Jesus Christ say, we shall love God with all our strength, with all our spirit, with all our might, with all our soul and our body, and we shall love each other as we love ourselves. So uh, we, we're talking about that second level, the horizontal aspect of love. The Bible say, how can you say you love God you never see, but you hate your brothers and sisters that you see every single day? So we're talking about that and in the Bible, there's this, that chapter we just read, uh, talk about the characteristic of love. How do I know that I have that type of, type of love in my life? How do I know that when I love my neighbor, and in the Bible say, when you have those things in your life, so you have the love of Christ. And in one of the characteristics of love this morning, the Bible say, love never dies. Say that with me. Say that one more time. Say that louder. Love never dies. So the reason why love never dies is because God is love and God cannot die. God, God is eternal. The Bible says God is love and God is eternal. So that means love never dies. Love never perish. So when you have the love of God in you, that love never dies. And also you yourself, uh, you never die. Even if you, you physically you die, but guess what? The Bible says your act of love will outlive you always. So uh, uh, we're going to talk about four uh, characteristic of uh, that type of love that never die, that never perish. The Bible says Paul was talking to the Ephesian church and he was praying for them. And as he was praying for them, he, he, he was able to give them four things, four uh, uh, cornerstones, four pillars that uh, any relationship that you establish in order to have longevity uh, and that uh, in order for that relationship to last, love must be at the center. Love must be the corner and there's four pillars, there's four racks uh, that you're going to need and if you build any relationship upon those racks uh, uh, of love, uh, it will last forever. That relationship will last. Whether it's uh, your marriage, whether it's uh, uh, a church, whether it's uh, work, uh, whatever relationship that you have, if you have those four cornerstones, if you have those four uh, 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 racks in that relationship, that love or that relationship will last, never die. So let's look at it with me uh, closely. Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, Paul was praying for them and he's going to tell them uh, 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 the characteristics of a love that never perish because the Bible says love never dies. Hallelujah. Let's read together from verse 14. One, two, three, let's go. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you 
of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit and the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith that you been what? And what? Grounded. Shall ground it. Come on, shall ground it. Grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all this sin. What is what? Number one. Uh-huh. Number two. The length. Number three. Number four. All right? So, uh, uh, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I want you guys to read the verse 18 again. It's going to give us four levels or four pillars or four racks that love must build that foundation. You must build any relationship on. That you may be able to comprehend with all this. What is the first one? The width. Shout the width. What is the second one? Shout the length. What is the third one? The depth. Shout the depth. Number three, and the high. So, all right, so those four levels in the book, uh, in the book, Growing in the Love of Christ, uh, 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 that uh, describes those levels for us. So any relationship that we establish, we need to have those four pillars in, uh, in that relationship. Again, whether it's a marriage relationship, whether it's a, uh, your family or a church or work, wherever there's a relationship and other for that relationship to last because the Bible says love never perish. So love must be at the center of that relationship. And there's four things that love will bring in any relationship that will cause that relationship to last forever, never die, never perish. The first one is the width. The width. So that we can know, we can comprehend, hallelujah, so the width of Christ's love for us. And in that love, we must have it. Because the Bible says we have Christ inside of us. So Christ is love. God is love. And God lives inside of us. So therefore, we have that love inside of us. So any relationship that we are in, so we need to have first of all, in order to have to, for it to last um, longevity so we need to understand uh, so with the person that I'm in relationship with uh, I need to develop the width of love um, what gives uh, uh, your love is a uh, width is, uh, uh, is tolerance um, understand that when God created us, when God made us, uh, God created us uh, with our different. Everybody was created different than one another. So our differences were made by God to complete one another. Those differences were made so that we can better one another. So we know the enemy tried to come and bring those, take those differences and make us destroy each other. The Bible says when God created mankind, God uh, uh, deliberately, uh, 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 God uh, purposely created us different than one another. So in any relationship that you are in, in other, the first thing you need to understand the width, uh, the width of love. So in order for us uh, to last, whether it's my marriage, whether it's a church, whether it's a friendship, in order for it to last, uh, I need to learn to embrace, embrace or tolerate the differences that I'm seeing in the other person because we were created different than one another. So I need to be able to tolerate you are not like me and I'm not like you. We are different than one another. So therefore, we must accept, we must embrace and tolerate our differences. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me so far? All right, so that's the width of love. What give width to a relationship? What give that, that relationship? What help it to last? So it's when, if I'm in a marriage, I understand uh, as a man, I'm different than my wife. Uh, we think differently. So we act differently. If I'm in a church, uh, so I, I need to understand God give everybody here their own personality. They, 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 we, we different than one another. So when we are in relationship, uh, so I don't bring you down because you're different than me. I accept you. I embrace you. You because with you, guess what? I'm more complete. All right? We don't see the same thing. You see something different, but what you see bring more, add more uh, senses uh, to the relationship, as, add, add more help to the relationship. So therefore, uh, if we're going to last, uh, we need to have love and we need to have the width of love. Uh, understanding I am different, you are different, so instead of talking bad about you, I embrace you and say, let's work together and let's go all the way for God. Shout hallelujah. Come and shout hallelujah. So Paul said the first thing that we're going to need, the first cornerstone is we need to have, we need to put the width of love in that relationship. The second thing we say that, not only to understand, to comprehend, to know the width, but also to know the length. Shout the length. Come and shout the length. Come and shout the length. All right, so the width. All right, so that's understand and uh, embrace each other's differences. But the length, what's going to help us to go all the way? What's going to help any relationship to last uh, is when length equals to patience. Shout patience. Come on, shout patience. 
All right? The length of love is patience. This is when we are willing to suffer for a long time. We are willing to suffer for a long time because we are not perfect, because we are flaws in our lives. It doesn't matter how much we pray, how much we fast, how much verses that we, we know. The Bible says we are flaws versus we have weakness inside of us. Whatever the human being that you meet, after you spend some couple months with them or a couple days, you will realize that they have flaws, they have weaknesses, you have weaknesses in you. So the only thing that's going to help us to last, we need to be patient with one another. Amen. Come on, shout patient. Amen. Come on, shout patient. So without it, no relationship will last. Because by the time you discover my weakness, you discover my flaw, you will give up on me. But the Bible says love never gives up. Are you guys with me? Love never gives up. No matter what I see, no matter the flaw I see in you, I, was, I have to say to myself, no, if we're going to last, I need to understand the same way God is patient with me, I need to be patient with the person that I'm in a relationship with. Whether it's a family, whether it's church, whether it's work-related, you name it. Whenever there's a human relationship, interpersonal relationship, we need to have the width, we need to have the length. So width has to do with embracing, accepting, Tolerating and then length has to do with being patient with one another. And I know it's a hard thing to do. All right, sometimes uh, 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 we, look, uh, 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 we look at people and then we say, man, they're never going to change. Man, I've been, this person has been in church forever. I, I was saying in, in the first service this morning, sometimes as a pastor, you tend to give up because some people, they've been in church forever. They, they listen to the message every Sunday morning, but you see no change in their life. And at that moment, at that point, you are about to give up and something radical happen in their life because the God we serve is a loving God and is patient with that person. So because God is patient with us in our relationship with one another, we must be patient with one another. Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah if you understand it. Amen. Come on, shout glory if you understand it. In order for our relationship to last, we need to have the width of love. That's been, guess what? I'm going to embrace you. You embrace you. Embrace me. I accept you. You accept me. We're able to tolerate our differences. Number two, we are patient with one another. But the Bible says, Paul says, we need one more, one more, one more, one more stone, one more pillar that will help us uh, to grow, to have a lasting relationship that will be able to comprehend the width, comprehend the length and the depth. Shout the depth. What gives your love death is sincerity. Shout sincerity. Come and shout sincerity. All right, so when you are truly honest, uh, 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 when you are sincere, when you are a truthful person, it gives death to your relationship. So guess what? The people know you are, they can count on you. All right, so I, I know in that relationship, when you speak, you don't lie because of your sincerity, because of your truthful, truthfulness. We're able to have a, a long and lasting relationship because each time we're talking to one another, you don't lie, you don't cover stuff, you let me know the way it is because the Bible says when you love somebody, you speak the truth with that person. Are you guys with me? And then people, people, people can count on you. People respect you when you are a sincere person. That's what gives depth to your relationship when you are very sincere. And then the last one, Paul said that we need to understand that we'll be able to comprehend the width, the length, the depth, and also the height. Shout the height. Come on, shout the height. Come on, shout the height. Width has to do with embracing, accepting. Length has to do with patience with one another. Depth has to do with uh, 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 sincere, sincerity. But height has to do with forgiveness. Shout forgiveness. forgiveness. Come on, shout forgiveness. forgiveness. And I love the way that that put it in the book. Uh, when, you are, when you have a forgiving spirit, it allows you to fly above every offense that people may direct against you. Again, in a relationship, because, because we are not perfect, because we have sin inside of us, it's it's, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible for, for, for me to be in a relationship with you and then for us to spend the entire year or all our entire life and I never done anything wrong and you never, you never do anything wrong to me. It would be impossible because we have flaws. We have sin inside of us. The Bible says we are becoming like Christ. We are not like Christ yet, but we are in the process of becoming. Because we are in the process of becoming, so guess what? In our relationship, I will do things. No matter how much I love you, no matter how much you love me, I'm going to do something. I'm going to say something that will offend you. But the Bible says what's going to help us, what's going to make us to stay together for a long time is when I offend you or when you offend me, guess what? I have a forgiving heart. I can forgive you. 
Every time you forgive, you fly over, you fly high over every offense. Instead of uh, uh, carrying bitterness inside of you, you forgive. You let that thing go. You let the, whatever happened, you let the past be the past and you embrace. The Bible says, uh, Peter came once to Jesus Christ and said to Jesus Christ, how many times I should forgive my brother? Maybe one time, maybe three, maybe seven times. Christ said, no. Nah. In relationship, relationship where love never dies, you don't put a number in forgiveness. Every time the person comes, to ask you for forgiveness, you forgive. Ouch. Every time, every time the opportunity comes for you to forgive, you don't keep that word. You don't keep, you don't say, nah, I will never forgive that person. I'll never trust again. Nah, you got to let it go and you forgive. That give depth, high to your relationship so you can fly higher. And each time you fly higher, guess what? The devil cannot mess up with that relationship because every time Satan checks you out, he says, guess what? There's depth there. There's length there. There's width. There's patience in that relationship. I'm patient with that person. In that relationship, guess what? I can embrace, accept, and tolerate that person. In my relationship, I can, I can be sincere with that person. And in my relationship, I can forgive. If you can forgive, Forgive, if you can be sincere, if you can have patience, if you can tolerate, your relationship will last. Amen. Give him praise and glory. Give him praise and glory. I say, give him praise and glory. I say, give him praise and glory. That's what Paul say. Paul say, I'm praying for you. I am interceding for you. I am fasting for you. So in our relationship, every relationship must be grounded in love. Shout love. Come on, shout love. Paul said, I'm going to pray that God strengthen you in your inner man, in your spirit man, and then so that you can cultivate, love can build inside of you as a cornerstone. And when you have those four pillars, the, those four rocks in that foundation, whether it's the church, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your friendship, when love is at the center and all those pillars are there, guess what? It's going to last. Nothing can shake it. No storm. No matter what comes, that relationship will last. If it's a church, no matter what the devil trying to do, that church will last because there's love in that church. If it's a family, no matter what the enemy trying to do, that family will last. It would outlast any storm because there's a depth, there's length, there's width, and there's height. I give him praise and glory in the house. Woo. But that was the theological aspect of it. But the Bible say one thing about love that I want you to understand. The Bible say, when we read it, it say, it doesn't matter what I believe, what I say, what I do, I am bankrupt without love. I want you to know something this morning. Love is an action. Tell your neighbor that. Say, love is an action. Tell them that, say, love is in action. Come on, tell them, love is in action. Let's quickly read that story with me. Uh, I said it to you guys in Luke chapter 10. Uh, 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 same thing again, that same approach uh, uh, where Christ uh, uh, talk about that. Let's, let's read together. Let's read together. One, two, three. Again, we're going to pick it up from the Message Bible, all right, which is a, 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 a paraphrase of the, this text from the Greek, and then it's giving him a, a new meaning so that we can understand it much better. All right, let's read together. One, two, three. Stood up with a question to test Jesus. Teacher, what do I need to do to get eternal life? And Christ answered, what's within in God's law? How do you interpret it? Uh -huh. He said, that you love your God with all your passion, prayer, muscle, uh -huh. and that you love as well as you do. Uh -huh. Let's go. Good answer, say Jesus. Do it and you will. All right. Let's go one, two, three. He asked. And just how would you define neighbor? Jesus answered by telling a story. There was a man from Jerusalem too. On the way he was attacked by, they took his clothes, beat him up, and went off leaving him half dead. Luckily, a priest was on his way down to the same wood, but when he saw him, Across the other side, then a Levite, religious man, show up. He also avoided the injured man. Uh -huh. The word came on him when he saw the man's condition. His heart, shot his heart, shot love. Come and shot love. Come and shot love. His heart went out to him, uh -huh. and he gave him what? Uh -huh. Disinfecting in his wounds. Then he lifted. Unto his donkey, led him. 
and made him what? Comfortable. In the morning, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the saying, take good care of him. If it costs any more, put it on what? On my bill. I'll pay you on my way back. Uh -huh. What do you think? Which of the three became a neighbor to the men attacked by robbers? Uh -huh. The guy answered, the one who treated him, what? Shall love his kind. Come on, shall love his kind. Come on, shall love his kind. So the one who treated him kindly, the religion scholar responded, Jesus said, what? What? Five people tell them, go and do the same. Tell them, tell them that. Come on, give them a high five. Tell them, go and do the same. Give them a high five. Tell them, go and do the same. Go and do the same. Come on, tell them. Shake them. Tell them, go and do the same. I want you to understand in the biblical mindset, in Christ's mindset, we don't talk about love. We put action in our words. All right? So let's look at that other verse again. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3 verse 18. Hallelujah. Go and do the same. Let's look at what the Bible say. My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Say that one more time. Let's not just talk about let's practice. Say that one more time. My dear children, what happened? Let's not just talk about let's practice real love. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So in the Bible, we don't talk about love. We practice love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave. Every time we talk, Christ said, no greater love than have than this to lay down your life for your friend, for your neighbor. So in Christianity, in the Bible mindset, in God's mindset, we don't talk about love. We practice real love. The Bible says, don't talk about it, but practice love. This is why when they ask Jesus Christ about uh, uh, what is the greatest love in the Bible and how do I love my neighbor, and he gave them the story about love so we can practice love. So today I'm just going to give you, taken from the book, that has given us a lot of way, ways we can practice love in the book. If you do your devotion, uh, man, you, some people are very happy about it. There's one of them say that pay, pay for somebody's lunch. I, I love that part. I love that part. I wish somebody can pay for my lunch. <laughs> There's so many things that that put uh, a sight in the book, but I want to take only three uh, uh, for you this morning. Uh, three ways to practice. Three ways uh, to practice love this morning. And are you ready to practice? Yeah. Come on, are you ready to practice? I know you came to listen to a, a theological uh, 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 Bible uh, uh, sermon this morning, but the Bible says if you're talking about love, we don't talk about love. We practice love. Yeah. Chat action. action. Come on, action. Come on, shout action. Shout love is action. Come on, shout love is action. Briefly, the first way we practice love is when we take the time to pray for somebody else. And we let that person know about it. Ooh, the first way we can practice love. There's many other ways uh, that that put in the book. Uh, but one of the ways that you can practice love is when you take a time aside to intercede for somebody else, uh, to pray for somebody else. Uh, let's look at what the Bible says in first, first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh, let's look at what the Bible says. Let's read together. One, two, three. That prayers intercession and thanksgiving be made for be made for but i want you to say 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 petition prayers intercession all right so do, this is thing that you can do for somebody you can intercede interceding for somebody is standing in the gap for that person where you forget about yourself because the bible say love doesn't care about self love is not selfish love is selfless so one of the things that you can do in in your relationship with people whether it's your family whether it's church whether it's work whether there's human relationship one of the thing one of the way you can practice love is guess what you wake up today and you were supposed to pray for yourself because many Christians in church their prayer can only last one minute because after you pray for yourself there's nothing else to say are you with me after you there's that's that's so much you can say there's not that much you can say about yourself I just say God bless me bless my life and then that's it but guess what the Bible says the people when you have love in you so you take the time and you begin to intercede for somebody else and when you meet that person you let them know about it Say, sis, I was praying for you. I don't know for I don't know what you're going through, but guess what? I woke up today, and then I was while I was doing my devotion, and then your your uh, you came on my spirit, and I began to intercede for you. And guess what? I got good news for you. No matter what you're going through, God has your back. 
Come on, talk to me, somebody. No matter what you're going through, God has your back because I was about to intercede for you. I was about to pray for you. I was standing in the gap for you. And then when you can intercede, the reason that you hear this morning, because 2,000 years ago, Christ interceded for you. But that didn't stay there. The Bible said, guess what he's doing right now? He's still st sitting at the right hand of the Father. Guess what he's doing right now? Guess what he's doing right now? Interceding on your behalf, uh, praying for you because he loves you. So when you have love in you, one of the ways that you can practice that love is when you're praying for a sister. You pray for your mom. You pray for a pastor. You pray for a leader. You pray for your boss. Ah, come on, talk to me, somebody. We need to learn to stand in the gap for one another in the body of Christ. So that's, say, that's, that's proof that I have love in me. Uh, if, you, if you study with us, uh, uh, that shows us uh, seven ways. Uh, we can seven things to do when you are doing your devotion, when you are praying. We call it the praying the ways of the tabernacle. All right, so therefore you, st you, start, you start at the gate, then you go to the uh, 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 brazen uh, 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 altar, uh, altar of sacrifice, then you go to the lava, brazen lava, so that's number three. Then you go inside of the holy place. Then you go uh, uh, golden lampstand. Then you go to the table. That's number five. The sixth step is intercession. Before you can go into the holy of holies uh, so God can talk to you, you need to spend some time in interceding for somebody else. Uh, let me say it one more time. Before God can speak to you, before God can reveal things to you, God is looking to see, can you intercede for somebody? Can you stand in the gap for one of my uh, uh, children, for your neighbor? If you can do that, God will always speak to you. So the first thing that you do, the first way you can show love, the first action that you can do to show love this morning is when you can stand in the gap and pray for somebody. Can we practice? Can we practice? Yeah. I don't know who you're sitting next to, but that's your neighbor. That's your brother, that's your sister. I want you to hold the hand of that person and take 60 seconds to pray for that person. Ask them for their name. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Maybe that's, a, maybe that's your enemy. That's good. If it's your enemy, that's good. The Bible says pray for your enemy. Pray for your enemy. If it's your enemy, that's very good. That's very good. That's very good. Ask them for their name and they begin to intercede for them right now. Ask them for their name and begin to squeeze that hand. Squeeze that hand and believe God for that person right now. Believe God for that person right now and tell them no matter what you're going through. Just don't do it just because I say so, but do it because Christ means what you say. The Bible says we don't talk about love. Love, we practice love. That's one of the things you can do is you stand in the gap for that person, for that person. And you two do the same thing. And the campuses do the same thing. Hold hand to that person and squeeze that hand. Say, I got your back this morning. I am interceding for you this morning. Your life will count this morning. Your life will come and tell him. Come and pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. The devil doesn't like that. The devil doesn't want that. But guess what? Your life will count. I don't care what you've been through last night. I don't care the dream that you had. I don't care what you saw in your dream last night. I don't care. I don't care what came. I I don't care the turmoil that you had last week, but guess what? This is Sunday morning, and you're in the right place next to the right person. And right now, I'm lifting up my voice, and heaven will hear your name this morning. Heaven will hear your name this morning. And I declare, no weapon forged against you shall prosper. Father, I'm praying for every single person in YouTube right now who's watching this service. I pray in Jesus' mighty name, I am standing in the gap for them that the sickness will leave the body. They will not die before their time. Father, I'm praying that divorce will not go through. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now that Satan, you cannot destroy that family. You cannot destroy my brother. You cannot destroy their finances. They will leave. 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 They will not die. They will come and pray for them. You got 30 more seconds. Pray for them. Pray for them. Squeeze that head. Pray for them. Their relationship will last. Hallelujah. Yes, they will make it to that exam. They will pass that test in the name of Jesus Christ. If they have sickness in the body, I, I cancel that sickness right now in the name of... Come on, come on, pray. Yeah, that's what love is. That's what love is. That's what love is. When you take the time to pray for somebody, Paul said, I urge you that you pray for the government. You pray for every single person. You pray for your boss. You pray for your leader. You pray for your pastor. You pray for your family. You intercede for them. As you stand in the gap for them, God is interceding for them in heaven. And how the Bible say, if two of us agree on earth, touching anything, it's already done. In Matthew chapter 18, Christ say, if two of you agree 
on earth. Uh, touching anything, uh, it's already done. Uh, I'm one, you are one, that's two. Let's go, let's go. I cancel the fear of sin over your life. Uh, I cancel every work, uh, I cancel every agenda. Now, 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 come on. Come on. My goodness, yeah, yeah. Pray, pray, pray for them. Pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Pray for them, 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 pray for them. Now, 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 do it fast, do it fast, do it fast, do it fast, do it fast. See, sir, you will make it, boy, you will make it, you will make it. That sickness will not destroy you. You will make it, you will make it. Sorrow may do overnight, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. The Bible says, open up your mouth, I will feel it. I declare that my God will fill your mouth this morning with good things. I declare that my God will unleash his grace and glory and power over your life. And you shall make it. Come and give him praise and glory. Give him praise in the house. Come and give him praise in the house. Come on. Give him praise in the house. Give him praise in the house. Give him praise in the house. Yeah. Give him praise in the house. Give him praise. Come on. Come on. Glorify his name. Glorify his name. Glorify his name. Yes. And I got great news for you because your brother just prayed for you. Because your sister just prayed for you. Your life will count. Your life will count. Your life will count. Your life. Thy say the Lord. Because somebody just stood in the gap for you. You shall make it. You shall make it. You shall make it. You shall make it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe for some of you, you probably say, man, I don't know what you just did. It just was a religious thing. But let me give you a verse that can back up what we just say. In the Message Bible, Proverbs 3, verse 27 to 29. Proverbs 3, verse 27 to 29. Hallelujah. So you just, you just pray for somebody. And I'm going to give you two more things. But that verse is very important. Let's be together. One, two, three. I can hear you. I can hear you. One more time. Never walked away from someone who deserves help because your hand is God's hand for that person. 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 Blessed be the God who trained my finger into war. So when I was praying for you, when I hold your hand, it wasn't me who was holding your hand. It was God who was holding your hand. You thought it was me, but my Bible says, don't never walk away from someone who deserves of help when you came here you didn't tell me anything but God knows that you are in need God knows your headache God knows your heartache God knows your setback God knows your turmoil and it just reveal right now the spirit of intercession so when that person touched your hand it was God's hand that just touched yours and when God's hand touched your hand every sickness died every cancer died every heartache flee because when God is in the center of something else no demon can say no poverty can stay uh, come and shout glory come and shout glory Come on, shout glory. Come on, shout glory. Come on, wave your hand like this. Wave your hand like this. Wave your hand like this. Yeah, that's God's hand. That's God's hand. That's God's hand. The Bible says your hand is God's hand to the person next to you. My hand is God's hand. Aye, aye, aye. Nobody can see God, but they can see me. They can see your hand. When they see your hand, they see God's hand. And I declare prophetically this morning, everything that you touch shall be blessed. Everyone that you touch shall be blessed. Everywhere you put your hand shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Hey! 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 Mm, I feel in my spirit someone came today. You came discouraged. You came, you wanted to give up. I got good news for you. God just touched your hand. You cannot give up. Love never give up. Love never give up. Love never give up. I don't care who gave up on you. I said the Lord, love never give up. God just touched your hand. You're going you're gonna to run again. You're going to run again. And you shall make it. In the name of Jesus Christ. The second thing that you can do, the second thing that you can do, not the first thing you can pray for someone, the second thing that you can do, I just mentioned this one and go on the third one. You can run an errand for someone. Let's just say that would be what, what, what is the second thing? I can hear you. So the, what is the second thing? It just means uh, do an act of service for someone. Serve somebody. When you have love, you always serve. This morning I say that I'm going to say it again. When a baby is just born, they, every baby were, were, uh, born with their hands closed. 
You guys watch that, right? When they're born, they're crying, but their hand is very close. Because as a baby, you don't want to, you want everything to watch center on you. Right? That's what every baby wants, right? Which is acceptable because uh, feed me, uh, clean me, uh, take care of me. But the more you mature, the more that hands open. Anybody with me? So when you are a baby Christian in church, uh, you always want people pray for me, take care of me, preach to me, give me the word. It's all about me, 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 me. But when you, when you begin to mature in love, when you begin to grow in love, it's no longer you anymore. Your hands is wide open. Come on, come on, come on. I say to God, I want to live a wide open life. My hand must always be open to serve people. When you have love in you, it doesn't matter your position, your title, your degree. I'm, come talk to me, somebody. When you have love, when you are growing in love, you will serve anybody, anywhere. They don't have to ask you. You just serve. I said you just serve. I say you just serve. I say you just serve. I say you just serve. I want you to touch three people, tell them serve. Serve people, serve people, serve people. If you learn how to serve people, your hand is God's hand. If you learn how to serve people, when you're in a ministry, you serve. When you're in a relationship, you serve. You don't wait for them to ask you to do something. You're already thinking about ways. I'm going to help. Somebody let you borrow their cars before you return it. You wash that car first. You put gas. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. You've been friends with that couple for the longest time And you know both of them are busy They have children, they are busy, they're working hard You can serve them, say guess what This weekend I'm going to babysit for you I want you guys to go on a little vacation I'll take care of the kid for you I'll pray for her, uh, talk to me somebody Shut serve, come on shut serve Come on shut serve Because guess what, when you serve Your act of love will always outlive you One day God will say well done Good and faithful servant When you were on earth No matter what I did in your life No matter how high I put you But you have a servant heart Because in God's kingdom the greatest is the one who serve Not the one who are uh, uh, uh. Shout glory Come on shout glory Come on shout glory Nowadays in Christianity, everybody wants people to serve them. Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, serve me. Please know. What about you? When are you going to say, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to serve people next to me. I'm going to serve people at work. I'm not going to wait for them to tell me something. I'm going to go and serve because I love. Ooh. I know Christ loved us when he came down two years ago and began to serve us. And he told the disciple, in the kingdom of the world, people who are in high position, we want people to serve them, but say, in my kingdom, when I put you up, I put you up so you can serve others. Because the true mark of love is servanthood. <laughs> so the first thing you can do, you can pray, shall pray. pray. The second thing, you can serve, run an errand for somebody. But the third one, every woman here will love me for the third one. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to put it on the screen and every man will say it with me. What is the third one, media? What is the third one? What is the third one? What is the third one? What is the third way you can... What is the third way? What is the third way? I can hear you. What is the third way? Guys, I cannot hear you guys. What is the third way? Where's all the men? All the men, wave your hand. All the men in the house. Where, where, where's all the men? Yeah, where, I want you to see. I want to see those, those hands high, high, high. And wave them, wave them, wave them. Oh, uh, if you're sitting next to a man, his hand is not up, you got to be careful. We need some prayer. We need some prayer. We need some prayer. We need some prayer. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. And then keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. And then repeat that. What do we, what do we must do? Not you guys. Not the women. Not the other men. All the men. What do we must do? Whoa. Whoa. What, what do we must do again? Let's try it again. What do we must do? Oh, man, that was a little bit weak. A little bit weak. Send flowers to a woman in your life. That's one of the ways you can demonstrate your love. It can be your mother, it can be your sister, it can be your stepmother, your, your cousin, it can be your wife, your daughter, it doesn't matter. Guess what? You need to be able to send flowers. And you don't have to wait for Valentine. Yeah. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait for a special occasion because you are, guess what guys, guess what, guess what, guess what? In the society nowadays, they don't, they, they don't even think about that. Last time, I think three years ago, uh, 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 I don't know, I, I was busy in ministry, and then I, I'm thinking about how my wife been very supportive, and I, was, I just passed by Walgreens, and I got some chocolate. 
I got some flowers. And by the time I got to the cashier, and she said, well, what did you do this time? She said, mm, I wonder what, what trouble you caused this time because it's not normal in the, in the world's view. It's not normal for those things to happen. You must be in trouble. It must be a special occasion. But I want you to understand this morning uh, because God created women so special. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Uh, when, the, when men saw the first woman, the Bible said he began to compose song white poetry and he say wow that's what w wow shot wow. wow she's wonderful shot wonderful, wonderful. Ooh. and oh oh my god oh my oh my oh my oh my. come on say hallelujah come on say hallelujah in the book in the book that say that's three reasons why women are so special uh, in the presence of god number one they bring life yeah. Woo, shot life Come on, shout life. Come on, shout life. Guys, I know, I know, I know we're good, I know, but guess what? In, in any place, when there's no woman, there's no life. When you enter a house, if there's no woman in that house, or that woman is not happy, there's no life. Everything is dead. The place is dirty. Everything, oh man, you find stuff everywhere. There, there's no life. Everybody's all oh, by myself. It's like, ah, oh, no, no, shout life. Come on, shout life. Come and shout life. It wasn't me that said, read your Bible sometime. The Bible said, it is not good that men shall be alone. I'm going to give, her, give him a woman. Yeah. Talk to me. Don't, don't look at me with that, with that tone of voice. Please don't. It's check God. Go with God. Talk to God. So when there's no woman, there's no life. They don't only bear children, but they bring life. When we see them, we have, oh man, especially if we're in love with them, we sing songs. I told you, like, the first time I look at my wife, I, I, was, man, I, I began to sing. I pick up my guitar and I look at your eyes and I see my life. Every day you're always on my mind. I'm singing. I'm singing. And she says, sing it again. 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 Ah, Rabba Sita, Rabba Yere Mokosu. Ah. Yeah, now when I travel, I travel with my guitar. People think I'm, I come to play. Now I come to play for my wife. I come to play for my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Number one, they bring life, shot life. Number two, they support us, they helped us. Ah, come on, talk to me, somebody. The third thing that they do, they what? They helped us. When you bring them along with you, don't let the people lie to you, say they, they're not headache. No, nah, because we don't understand them. Woo! The day you understand a woman, woo, life. When they're talking, you be quiet. Let them talk. They don't want your answer. They want your ease. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want your answer. They don't want you to No, no, no. They just want somebody to listen to them, what they're going through, the headache. Just listen. Are you listening? Yes, I'm listening. Yes, son. You pay attention? Yes. What did I just... I don't remember, but I'm... All the women say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not the one who's making those things up. It's biblical. Child is biblical. This is why the devil hates women with a passion. Woo! He uses us uh, to destroy them. He uses us uh, to, to uh, 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 look bad on them. This is why I love Jesus Christ. Uh, Christ always fighting for women in the Bible. He always fighting for them. One of these days, they brought a woman. They say they got who was caught in adultery. But you know, it takes two people to have adultery. There's got to be a man and a woman. But those guys hate women so much, they forgive the guy in the brain. They brought the woman to Christ. Christ said, guess what? You got the woman because this guy loves women. Ah, talk to me, talk to me. This one loves women. He cares for them. And he said, guess what? I don't condemn you, nor condone, but no, go and sin no more. Hallelujah. So uh, the day has come where God's going to restore that love back so that men will begin to embrace you guys because you guys are wonderful. You guys are a special treasure. Whether it's your mother, beside every great man, there's a great woman. Don't let people belittle you. Don't just sell yourself. Understand that you are a special treasure. You are a 
amazing you are one of a kind you are marvelous you are wonderful God created you different so you can help us mm -hmm. and number three I'm close with this one God uses women to make us understand the love that he has for us. A mother's heart or a woman's heart woof, full of compassion. Each time God wants to compare his love for us, he always uses the love of a woman. Can the mother forget about his baby? And he said, the same way, I will never forget about you. Ah, talk to me somebody. At the cross, when every man left, when every man fled, guess who was next to Christ at the cross? The woman. Ah, talk to me somebody, talk to me somebody. The day of the resurrection, when everybody was in hiding, guess who woke up Sunday morning early? Woman woke up early in the morning, said, I'm going to go to the tomb, I'm going to see my, I, 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 I'm going to see my Savior, where they bury him, where they put him. When every man was hiding, or every man was running, the woman said, no, I cannot run. The devil, you're not going to get this one. I'm walking, I, 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 for the freedom. You never see a mother praying for a son, praying for a husband. You never see a mother praying for her children. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, I'm standing in the gap. Therefore, you cannot have this one. Not today. Not in my lifetime. I don't care if daddy gave up on them. I refuse to give up. I don't care if everybody. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my. Ah, the In the ministry, when you got women praying, no devil can touch that church because they say, I'm going to pray. I'm going to. Ah, yeah, yeah. Shout hallelujah. I declare and I decree, it's not only doing a special day, we'll send flowers to you, but every day we'll tell you how much we love you, we'll call you, because the way you can prove your love for somebody is send flowers to a woman in your life. May God bless you, may God touch you, may God elevate you, may God, ay, ay, ay. May God use us as men to bless your life, to bless your life. May God use us to bless you, lift you up, uplifted you, but not breaking you down because you are special to him and you are special to... Let me go. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Shekinah app. Téléchargé le Kounia. Chers amis, moi gagne bonne nouvelle pour nous. En pile dans nous, te fait nous connait et bien que application Shekina gagne quelquefois li konn camper sous nous. Les prières a plus à marcher dans sans nous et bien c'est les ça application pesé frein. Et bien me gagne bonne nouvelle pour ça fini. Nous résoudre problème ça. Nous gagne une nouvelle version application Shekina et bien Kounia lo metel on leur commence à aller sans arrêter, c'est vous même qui pouvez que frère. Donc, nous encourageons eh bien, pour aller download la eh bien, nouvelle version de l'application chez Nasa. Tout à l'heure, nous allons comment on est capable de faire. Deuxième bagage qui fait nous compter encore, eh bien, c'est que dans la nouvelle version de l'application chez Nasa, nous avons l'opportunité eh pour capable voyer une requête de prière pour nous directement en application. Ça veut dire que pas besoin de sur Facebook ou pas besoin de sur l'autre moyen pour voir le nous directement en dans l'application chez Kina. Vous pouvez seulement cliquer sur le côté où vous marquez prayer. Et eh bien, vous êtes capable de voir une requête de prière. Nous même nous recevoir et puis nous prier pour vous pendant 40 jours et pendant le show que nous gagnons sur Radio. Donc, comment vous êtes capable de faire ça Vous êtes capable de faire update ça très facile. Gain, premièrement, gardez dans le téléphone nous pour voir si le bagage fait automatiquement. Parce que vous êtes capable de tout faire automatiquement. Mais si update là pour vous faites automatiquement, vous êtes capable d'aller dans Google Play, taper Shekina.fm. Shekina.fm. s e k i n a hfm Et puis, vous pouvez regarder, vous pouvez image, application apparaître, et puis cliquer sur update. Et bien, vous pouvez capable de faire mise à jour ça, qui permet tout de accès avec toute belle bagarre que nous à peine mentionné là. Donc, ou même qui n'a sous Apple ou Kabal App Store, et puis tapez chekina.fm et puis cliquez update. Mes amis, c'est net à aller. C'est blaïkor dans le Seigneur, dia dia dans le Seigneur, pas de camper, pas de freiner. Si vous vous freiner, c'est vous pour te faire. Que bon Dieu bénisse. Ma vraie nous sous Shekina. Shekina app. Téléchargez-le. Kounia.